Okay, now we're going to start on Acts chapter 14, verse 22. It says, uh, Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. We're going to go into the kingdom of God, but we're going to go through a lot of tribulations here on this earth. A lot is what verse 22 is saying. And if you haven't went through much tribulation on in this world yet, it's because you're not in the kingdom of heaven yet. But once you do go in there, know that you got in there through much tribulation here on this earth. Here. Jesus never promised or told you that you weren't going to go through tribulation. He keeps on telling you and repeating it over and over and over again that you're going to go through much tribulation. A lot. We all are. Even me. Everybody. Even Jesus Christ himself went through a lot when he was being crucified on this earth. Right? So why not us? You know, we're not we're not exempt from that. We're going to go through a lot of tribulation, but we got to be happy. You know, because we know that in heaven there ain't going to be no more tribulation. Jesus is going to be there with us, um, comforting us. For all eternity. Amen. We're going to go to Romans 11 verse 7. Romans 11 verse 7. What then Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election hath obtained it. And the rest were blinded. Israel... Rejected the Messiah. So God. Gave the vineyard. To different husbandmen. Which are the Gentiles. God took the vineyard from the Israelites. And gave it to the Gentiles. Here saying what then. Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election hath obtained it. And the rest were blinded. You know. The rest were blinded, you know, they were blind. They didn't see Jesus Christ for who he was, but he said, But another man will come in his name, and him you will accept. And now we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52. 1 Corinthians 15, chapter. 15 verse 51 and 52 it says behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in a, the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed Remember earlier I had said at the last trumpet is when Jesus comes. Here it is saying in verse 52. I'm going to read it again. Verse 51 and 52 it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. The dead are going to be raised incorruptible. When Jesus comes back, he raises the dead first, go up first. Then us meet the dead in the air, you know. The dead go first, you know. So all the brothers and sisters that are have passed on, um... That are no longer with us anymore. Don't weep for them. Because. Jesus is going to raise them from the dead. And then he's going to change us. That are remaining still alive. If we get to make it through the very end. Of the tribulation. And then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 7.4. Chapter 7, verse 4, it says, 
Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. Whenever we go through tribulation, I know it's hard to do, but Jesus wants us to be happy. But that's hard to do when you're going through very horrible tribulations on this earth. But Jesus wants us to be happy during our tribulation. The word again, tribulation. And now we're going to go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, and it says, But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And then 5.2 says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Amen. So like I was saying earlier, you know, the dead are raised first. Then us which remain will be caught up together. But Jesus doesn't want us to cry for the dead. Like people who don't have hope. He wants us to. To know that. That that Jesus is going to raise them up. Even though they're asleep. And then us he's going to. Bring with them. But the dead rise first then us. Now we're going to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. And it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Don't let no man deceive you. Read the word for yourself. Don't trust a man's word. Trust the word of the Lord. What he he wants to tell you. And I will go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. James. I think I passed it already. Yeah, I think I passed. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, it's right here. Titus, Timothy, there you go. Second Timothy 4, 1, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Talking about Jesus Christ is going to judge the ones that he's going to raise up first and then us that are quick still, you know, quick. You know, we're still alive. You know, we're still moving. But saying that Jesus Christ will judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. When is he coming? 
at the last sound of the trumpet. That's when he comes to judge us. And then verse 8 on chapter 4 says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. He's going to give us a crown of righteousness on that day, not just for me, but for everybody that wants to see his appearing. Amen. And now we're going to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. James, 1 Peter. There we go. 4, 17 and 18. But the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? When Jesus comes back, he's going to judge his house first, his church. That's where he starts. But that's not where he finishes. He finishes with the ungodly. And he says, if the believers... And if the righteous scarcely be saved... Where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? In other words, if us as believers are so afraid to be judged by him, and we're believers, we're his sons and daughters, and if we're afraid to be judged by him, he's like, where will the ungodly say, judge me? I'm here. How can they even appear or show up to be judged by Jesus Christ when they're ungodly? If we are afraid to be judged, where will they be at saying, oh, judge me? You know, they're going to be even terrified. Way worse than we are, you know, so. But it begins at the house of God. Uh, now we go to First John, First John, two eighteen, and it says, "Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. It's the last time." If Jesus Christ comes back in 50, 100 years, nobody knows. That's a little bit of time. Because 2,000 years have passed almost since he's been crucified. You know, so I think the time is now. Because when, when he's coming in the clouds, you can't run and say, I repent. Because you're seeing him already. So you're seeing him. So now you believe that there is a God. So now that you see him. Okay, Jesus, I repent. You know, that's what Jesus Christ says. Blessed is he that hasn't seen me and still believes. You know, because a lot of us, the majority of us want to see him to believe. We are like Philip where we ask him, show us the father and it is sufficient for us. I'll believe you. And, and 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 that's why you, you you can't do that and that's why we got a righteous God like Jesus Christ because when you see him you can't put your beer down and run to him and say okay I'll stop drinking I believe in you save me or if you're you know watching porno on your cell phone and then you see him and you're like oh, okay I'm gonna put the porno down now now I want to go with you see it doesn't work like that if you were to say that the day before that, then yes, you're okay. See, that day before the terrible day of the Lord, the day before that, you can say that. And Jesus will accept you into his family. But the, that, that very day when you see legions upon legions of angels and you see Jesus and then you're like, okay, I believe you now. I want to go with you. 
He ain't going to take you with you, brothers. I'm sorry to tell you that he's not going to take you. That's why you got to look for him now while there is a chance and you still can. Right now, today. Don't wait till the last minute to look for him when he can't be found anymore. Look for him right now, brothers and sisters. Right now is the best time. Than all of the other times. Because but that day is not upon us yet. So tonight is still. There's still time. There is still time to look for him. So now we're going to go to Revelation, Revelation 6, 12, 17, 6, 12, 17, 6, 12, 17. It says, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a squirrel when it is rolled together, and every mountain and islands were moved out of their place. And the kings of the earth, and the great man, and the rich man, and the chief captains, and the mighty man, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? These are the ungodly men. The ones that I was telling you that. If we. If the righteous is scarcely saved. Where, how, how shall the ungodly stand? Or appear. For judgment. These are those men. That are. Hiding on the rocks. In the mountains. And want a mountain to fall on top of them. Because they want that mountain to cover them. And hide them. From Jesus Christ. But you know. They can have a, a mountain. Fall on top of them. But Jesus Christ will just pick it up with his fingers. And he'll still get you out of there. And he's still going to judge you. He created that mountain. He created it out of nothing. So he can pick it up. And make it disappear out of nothing. And he's still going to judge you. But these are the men that. Are ungodly. And they want to hide. From Jesus. And verse 17 says. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand. Who nobody. I, I don't think I'm able to stand. In the presence of Jesus Christ. Are you kidding me? Me a sinner. A. Uh, Mortal human being being able to say, Jesus, okay, Jesus, you can come and judge me now. I think I'm I'm good now. Brother, sisters, I don't think I can stand in the presence of Jesus Christ. Because I've done I've committed a lot of sins in my life. I know the Lord has forgiven me. But I I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. The flesh. I'm in sin. You know. I'm going to keep on sinning. Um, and now we're going to go to Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Uh, it's 1 through 17. Um, 
I'm going to just pick a few verses, some key, key point verses and read them. But if you want to read from verse 1 through 17, 1 through 17, I'm just going to pick some key verses. I'm just going to go over a few key verses. Um, and then chapter 12 says, verse 1, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, tra travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was cut up unto God and to his throne. Amen. Uh... Here in verse 17, it says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The dragon comes and makes war with us, the children of God, because we keep the testimony of Jesus Christ, that he died, came in the flesh, was resurrected on the third day, and now is sitting at the right hand of God. We keep his testimony. So the dragon's going to make war with us during the tribulation. Are we in the tribulation? A lot of us might think we are by what's happening in Syria with all our brothers and sisters being decapitated. But that's been happening since the beginning of time, since Cain and Abel, since the beginning of time. The devil has always used somebody to do his will on this earth. And it's not going to stop now. It's not going to end now. It's going to end when Jesus Christ comes back for his church. So until then, the, the dragon is just going to keep on making war with us. Are we in the tribulation? A lot might say we are. Are we in the, like right at the beginning of the tribulation? Some people say we might be. Some people might even say we're in the middle already. Three and a half years have passed. And now we're going to see the three and a half years that are going to lead up to even worse things than the first three and a half years. So reading all this, what we've just read, you decide what, where we're at and how it's going to end for each of us individually. You know, I believe, like I said in the beginning of the video, pre, post, present, I'm okay because I know my Lord Jesus Christ is coming back one day. And reading these verses, you decide if we're going to be in it or if we're going to be taken out of it. And like the verses say, don't let no man deceive you, brothers and sisters. Let no man deceive you. I think Jesus Christ said no man because he knows and people know the majority of the pastors here in America are men and I think that's why Jesus said let no man deceive you because in the majority of the churches here in America it's a man you know if he knew the majority was going to be a woman Jesus would have said don't let any woman deceive you but he said don't let any man deceive you because he probably he Jesus knows that it's a man the one that should preach the word to his congregation, you know. And that's why he said, don't let any man. Not saying 
that it can't happen in church. It can happen in church. You can be deceived in church. That's why it's so important that you read your Bible and let the Holy Spirit help you and guide you and show you if that's where you need to be and what does the the pastor preach there? What does the father preach there? What's coming out of his mouth? Is it Does it line up with the Word of God or is it something else? And that's my opinion. Um... Brothers and sisters, God bless you, and I hope you learned something, and all the honor and glory to my Lord Jesus Christ, because without Him, I wouldn't be able to do these, this, what I'm doing, and I thank all the pastors out there that preach the gospel of my Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm learning just like everybody else, and... I thank everybody out there that does the work of God for the for our God. And with that, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. May the Lord always be with you. May the Lord always give you His wisdom and knowledge in everything. In my Lord's name, my Lord Jesus Christ, amen.